Welcome members to our 25th season, 2022. Keeping Mike's dream alive of bagging, tagging, and bragging for 25 years. We've come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> and then walk over the hill and there it is right there. <laughs> After 25 years, no one has stopped Mike's massive deer. It scored a whopping 386.3 and a rack score of 181.3. Congratulations, new state record for the Northeast Big Buck Club. Thank you very much. Mahogany Ridge, number one. In 25 years, we have weighed in 753 bucks and 150 turkeys. Our yearly video is unique and full of memories. Check us out on YouTube, Mahogany Ridge Buck Club. And our email address is mahoganyridgebuckclub at gmail.com. We are still about 100 members strong with 14 to 16 father and son or daughter partners and more use being added every year. <sighs> Big buck down. In the past 25 years are full of many good times and unforgettable memories. Thank you, Mike, for the start of a wonderful thing. That was pretty awesome. Let's get this party started. Let's see some stories from 2022. Pretty easy on. It was cold uh, morning. Oh, it was probably 8, 8.30, and I turned around. He looked out in the back of the field behind me, and he was running across the middle of the field. So I hit him, hit him with a grunt a couple times, and he just turned and came right in. Shot him at like 20, 27, 28 yards. So. It was a shocker for me because I was starting to get cold, and I got busted by a couple of does. So I figured my hunt probably was going to be over and I adjusted my jacket and got all set up in about five minutes. I see hear something coming up from behind him and he come up the, out of a ditch and he was right there stopped 25 yards away stared at me. I had to adjust my gun I had to kind of put my gun sideways because I had my coat up covering my face and he stood there to watch me and I, I got him. Well, I've been hunting pretty hard. It was middle November there, first couple weeks, first week in November, and I had a couple pictures of this deer, and he wasn't top of the list, but he was big enough, I said, and I saw two other bucks chased a doe right past me early on in the afternoon hunt. Came right through, and about 45 minutes, not big enough to shoot, 45 minutes later, saw him down there, and he sat right under this apple tree about 80 yards away for probably 30, 40 minutes. And I said, well, it's getting close to dark. I'll try grunting at him. Grunted to him. He came up to 30 yards, gave me a shot, and took it, and that was about it. Can you smell him? Yeah. No, I would not. See, it's not like your father's. I know. See, see you can't smell mine. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> but let me tell you, you could smell him after I shot him because I gut shot this deer. Um, didn't mean to. And with a bow during gun season, uh, I found him five days later. All rotted. He didn't really have much coyote eaten, just a little bit out of him. But I said, you know what? I'm at least going to enter him. Can't eat him. Slow November. They always take yeah. two weeks off. Wasn't a scene a lot. And my buddy actually called me. He's like, hey, I saw a big one last night. Couldn't get a shot. You want to come help me kill him? So I went there. We hung a saddle set. And uh, about 3.30, came through chasing a doe, 35 yards. Stuck him, and then I called my buddy. I was like, hey, I stuck a nice one. I think I hit him good. He's like, I know. He died right at the base of my tree. He oh, came nice. full draw and was ready, and he just fell right over. So opening day, I got to admit, I'm getting old. I had an electric vest, went down, changed out my battery, looked up and walked in and bang. Didn't get him on camera and stuff, but hey, it's over 100 inches. I'm happy. You know, there was some shooting going on this morning, at that morning, and... Uh, I look behind me and I see him coming through and he, he had been hit, blew it. the right front and was shot off it. So, I mean, I ended up taking him. I mean, I didn't want to, probably would have let him go, maybe get a little bigger, but. Mercy kill. Yeah, I mean, I had to uh, 
I put him put him down when I saw he'd been hit. Yeah, I uh, hunted all season, um, archery hunting, and uh, this guy uh, about eight o'clock in the morning, I think it was, last day of archery season. Uh, I was out in my muzzle loader hunting some new property that we had um, north of where we usually hunt, and um, he ended up coming by. I uh, didn't see much this archery season, so um, this guy came by. He, uh, I noticed it was a really uh, uh, big-bodied deer, and then I was like, well, the rack isn't really, you know, as big as I was anticipating, but the deer was just huge. It weighed like 170-something pounds, and uh, so he came up by me about 20 yards away and let him have it, and I ended up catching him a little farther back than I wanted to. We jumped the string, and uh, we ended up tracking him about 300 yards or so, and I ended up finding him dead in a thicket in the woods. I had a really great year. Um, I, I killed my the most deer I've ever killed in a year. I shot five deer. I shot two up north, uh, early rifle season. And then I came down here, I shot a smaller buck with my bow. And then I shot this buck, opening week in a gun, on my on a lease I'm on with a couple guys, um, which was awesome. It was, just, it was really cool. I thought he was, he was a little bit bigger when I got up to him, a little ground trick into there. But still, uh, it was awesome. Still nice. Yeah, not bad. And then um, the, the, really the best hunt of the year was I brought my son out um, late that holiday season there the, in January. And um, we hunted from a, a box blind and we had a doe come in and I shot, shot the doe with the muzzle over my, my oldest son, Ryan, he's 10. So that was a really cool experience. I had my boy with me for that. So that was really cool. On another father and son story, Dad, Brad Laburn, was shut out of the archery division for a good reason. His son Kyle would pick up the slack by weighing in the heaviest deer during the archery season. Nice collar. Thank you. Uh, I got it on, I believe, November 13th. I took the shot. Uh, it was probably around 5 o'clock it was coming through, starting to get dark. Uh, I saw a couple other bucks coming through, but this was the, probably the best one I saw that night. Uh, I think it was a 45-yard shot. I didn't make the best or the shot that I wanted to. I believe I hit the shoulder blade, I believe a little bit, but I had to let it set that night because I had to go to work. So I go home or after work that morning, and I get a call from my dad after the sun came up to go look for it, and he saw it driving by the road in the lot next to the house, which was pretty lucky. It was pretty nice. I happened to go find it, but. Yeah, I'd say that was probably the easiest tracking job I've ever done. You had no uh, no um, archery entry this year? No, I didn't uh, Didn't have an archery ent entry. Uh, my brother and I went out to Montana, uh, pretty much the prime time of uh, archery, which would be, we left on October 25th, and I don't think we got back till the 8th of November. Oh, yeah, prime so, time. Yeah. yeah, so we uh, we had a good time. We drove out, and we both came back with mule deer. So, oh, nice. Yep, real nice ones too. We worked for them. It's been a long dry spell for Chip Bellner. This year, he came back strong with two big bucks. I had a dry spell. I'd have to say I probably went five or eight years without getting a buck. Wow. Hoggedy Ridge, so this year I, I told myself, you know, any two and a half year old buck I'm gonna shoot, so this is the first one I shot, so. I was happy with it. This one here, I almost didn't find. This buck here, it was it was a blizzard out when I shot this buck. I ended up shooting him with a 308 and hitting him, and I immediately got out of the stand to go see if I could find any blood or hair. I didn't wait or anything because it was snowing so bad out, and I found out where he reared up and kicked out and see it in the snow. But after that, there was nothing. I couldn't find nothing. You know, it, it, I went 45 minutes looking for this deer, never found it, never found it, never found it, never, no drop of blood, no hair, no nothing. And finally I figured, oh, I'll just do one more circle around. There was a little bit of an opening uh, further away. I was, I'll, I'll hit that, see if he came out into that. And sure enough, there he was laying. A shout out to John Rio for making the New York record book with his 2019 bear score of 20.7. This year, he had a great turkey season, bagging a couple of nice long beards. And he turned in the highest combined score for the gun and the archery division. John Rio, gun and archery. Yep. Which one is this? This is the gun. That's the gun one. How'd that one start out? Well, uh, me and my buddy Steve hunted a lot together this year. 
And um, this actually had a bad bow shot put on it. And I hit on my camera, and he was, his, the wound was pretty pussy, and he, the whole deer was getting green. So I said, if I see him in the swamp, open a day of gun, I'll take him. And he came out, open a day of gun, and I was out of the woods by 7.30. Same tree stand as my bow buck was shot two weeks earlier. Um, we found a new spot in the swamp, and it seems to be a, a buck magnet. <laughs> pretty productive so far. Yeah. The race for the 2022 Buckmaster Champion was a fierce one, with five 10-pointers and one 11-pointer weighed in. It came down to five members with scores over 300. A special thank you to the Weesport Rod and Gun Club for hosting us and to the Barbaglias for the scoring. Yeah, this is a buck uh, we've had I don't know, on some of our property for the last few years. Uh, we used to call him the Fat Ten. Uh, unfortunately, he got wounded probably two years ago, so he's kind of hasn't grown where he should have been. Uh, he's five and a half, uh, and you know, I'm very, very fortunate to harvest them. Um, fortunate for my wife, she uh, misranged them during bow season, so I got to give her a lot of credit for not taking a poor shot. And, uh, you know, I got them the last day of gun season, the last 10 minutes. Sat all day, one in the afternoon. Thought I seen an antler go through some thick stuff, so I eyes were on overdrive for a little bit, and um, all of a sudden I see a fawn pop up out of the ditch and he was right behind her. It wasn't uh, it wasn't a long shot, it was about twenty six yards. But it was there's a dip that I couldn't see <laughs> and that's where they go, so but yep. Nice deer. I broke my wrist wrist and I couldn't uh, I couldn't bow hunt in October. I couldn't pull my bow back so when gun season come I was ready. To get them, and uh, uh, they got them right by the house. Yeah, right up across the road from the house, and uh, it was the Monday, the first Monday, and uh, just to break a day, he was headed up to go to bed, bedding down. They come walking up across me and that, so I, I just had to. He was out about 60 yards, and uh, I had to wait for an opening through the hedge, of shooting lane, and he walked into it, and I. Uh, that was it. He went about 60 yards and fell over. It was uh, my biggest buck to date. Uh, last year I got a 142. Um, this one I think is a little bit, little bit bigger. We put quick tape on it, um, so I'm happy with it. Last day of bow, oh, nice. all, all came together. The morning of uh, November 15th, I got, I got a picture of this deer. It was the first picture I got of him. And uh, the next opportunity I had to hunt him was the 18th, which is the day before gun. Uh, it was down in Lafayette. They had just a couple inches of snow on the ground. I got in really early. Um, at 7.20, a doe was coming down the hill and she was getting chased by a really good buck. And they turned it right at the, like, almost at the base of my tree and went right back up into this thicket. I had no shot. And um, like 15 seconds later, this guy comes crashing down through the woods looking for where that, that doe and that buck went. And uh, I. No, he was a little late to the party, and uh, I grunted with my mouth, which was amazing, and he, and he literally came right to the base of the tree. I shot him at 10 yards. He ran 50 yards and piled up in sight. Yep, buddy of mine let me use his rifle, and something happened to my rifle, and I ended up using buddy of mine's rifle, 300 wind mag, and touched it off and got him. Yep. Buddy of mine's Creed, Creed More Adventures. Good guy. He let me he towed it out for me, and... Use his four wheeler, used everything. Use his knife. Huh. It's like a guided hunt. Well, I seen him like uh, two different times before that and uh, couldn't get a shot at him because I was hunting with a uh, shotgun. I went over to their camp over there. They got a camp over on, uh, next to Highlands Island. And uh, I said, You're hunting with a shotgun. He said, I'll let you use my rifle. I said, All right. The 300 Win Mag. And this is the result right here. He's a big buck, big neck on him. Yep, that 300 wind mag hit him so hard it knocked the ticks right off him. Yeah, yeah. It did. We got pictures of it. They're laying right there on the ground, right next to him when he, where he laid down. Yep. Yep. Creedmoor Adventures. A buddy of mine. In a close one, your 2022 Buckmaster champion is Scott Stoneberg, which makes him a two-time Buckmaster champion. Congratulations, Scott. 
Now here's the top 10 gun entries with Logan Jedra being the first on the scales. In the archery division, it took 30 days to get the first buck signed in. When it was all done, Mike Cullen led the way. In the other awards, the largest rack, that goes to Scott Stoneberg with a score of 148.2. And the largest doe goes to Scott Potter with 168 pounds. And in the muzzleloader division, with only one entry, goes to Bob Gould Sr. with a score of 235.7. One shot and there he lay. <laughs> uh, wasn't that long a shot, I waited until he got close, you know, maybe 30 yards. And in the turkey division, there were only nine entries. In third place, it was Bob Gould Sr. with a score of 61.437. In second place, Brandon Sears with a score of 62.125. And your winner is Joe McBride with a score of 63.6875. Folks, this is what hunting is all about. Youth hunter Logan Jedra is already having a good year. In the turkey season, he harvested a nice bird. In the gun season, he would end up in the top five with this 11-pointer. I uh, went out mule deer hunting with my brother out in California, Northern California, and I uh, was out there the first two weeks of um, October, which happened to be um, youth rifle season, so I was, wasn't able to be here for that. A buddy of mine, Josh, came over, Josh Champlin, we all know him, and uh, ended up taking him out youth rifle season. Yeah, so met Logan out. We uh, hiked out the hedgerow, and it was hot. I remember that. And uh, I was watching two small bucks, and uh, I was texting with Logan. He was watching deer in his field. And the two eight points that we were chasing ran down the hedgerow, and we kind of lost them. And we thought they caught over in the hay field, so we got over by that opening and tried to look for them. And I think they ran off the backside or something, but this guy... Definitely wasn't one of them, so he came out right into the hayfield, creeping out. I kind of stood in front of him, and he put the gun on my shoulder, and he shot the first time, and nice, maybe uh, a little excitement there and on both ends. He reloaded, did a great job, and uh, deer was, I don't know, at that time, maybe 50 yards broadside, and I said, feed him one, and he did, and boy, he let him have it. We're here uh, October 8th, Hughes Hunt, Logan Jetter on the board. Pretty sure we got a... Big spike horn down. Huh? Nope. What is that, big spike horn? Big, big old ten point. Yeah. Shooting big bucks like his dad. Nope. Look at that. Yes, sir. Nice, bud. Yeah, he had called up and he was excited and said, I got him, Dad. I was like, good for you. Yeah, he was excited. Sent him pictures. For me, I've got kids growing up now, and um, I've always been friends with Jedra's, and 
you know, so, so to be a part of this for Logan was really cool. And I just couldn't believe it, especially uh, having Josh there, being able to get him out uh, for that youth season. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it's good to have good friends like that. Sean Enulot and his son Colin went to Canada for a bear hunt. And here's their story. Eight of us went up to Quebec, my son included, and six of us got bears, so it was a great trip. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice trip. All right, all right, all right. $100 to the best video. You know how it works. Best applause wins. Entry one, the Jedras in their swamp buck. Big old swamp buck. Swamp donkey. Looks like a poaching tactic for sure. Out of season, probably. Right across the beaver pond. The next video comes from Steve Schaefer, and you ain't never gonna believe this. This kid is a killer. Whether it's frogs, turkey, whitetail, it don't matter. But what the hell is this? Riding whitetail? <laughs> and let her rip. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fucking shot. <laughs> this boy's got a screw loose. Entry three Here, is from uh, Logan Jedra and his spike horn box. Logan Jedra on the board. Pretty sure we got a big spike horn down. Huh? What is that, big spike horn? Big, big old time horn. Yeah. Shooting big bucks like his dad. Look at that. Yes, sir. Nice, bud. Entry four is Tim Courier. Beat Glock turkey video. That's unbelievable. They ain't even doing nothing to each other deep down. I don't know about that. You beat Glock now, look. All right, boys, beep the horn and break this up. I honk the horn, I bet it'll start going. I don't know. You ready for some action here, man? I walk right out there by him. Wanna bet? Stop, I'll walk right out there. Jeez, that's something else, isn't it? Separated. Go ring your neck, Joe. Grab, grab both of them. Just show me. You think I won't go over there? Do it. I'll get you on video. Man, that's a real good crop of videos right there. All right, guys and girls, this is where we need the applause for the best video. All right, you tranny Bud Light drinkers, put your beers down and give a, give a round of applause for the best video. Entry one, the Jedra Swamp Buck. Poachers for sure. Big old swamp buck. Swamp donkey. I'm going to swamp donkey here. Steve Schaefer in his yeah, riding whitetail video. <laughs> Fucking shot. <laughs> this kid's got a screw loose for sure. Entry three, Logan Jedra and his spike yes, horn buck. Nice, bud. Nice yep. job. Entry four, Tim Courier and his beak lock turkey video. I ain't bother. I'm gonna walk right out there by him. Wanna bet? Stop, I'll walk right out there. Never seen nothing like that before. They separated. Go ring your neck, Joe. Grab, grab both of them. Just show me. Great videos this year. The winner will be announced at the end of the party. Congratulations to 2022 Buckmaster champion Scott Stoneberg and to all those who placed in the contest. Thanks again, Mike. Too bad you passed away at an early age and can't enjoy this as much as we do. Okay, members, on a sad note, longtime member Tom Yanni passed away this early April. Our thoughts and prayers are with member Colin Yanni and his family. Let's take a moment to pay respect to all our members who have left us over the past 25 years.
That's all for this year. See you next year and stay safe. The preacher man says it's the end of time and the Mississippi River, she's a gold dry. The interest is up and the stock market's down and you're only getting mugged if you go downtown. I live back in the woods, you see A woman and the kids and the dogs and me I got a shotgun, a rifle, and a four-wheel drive And a country boy can survive Country folks can survive I can plow a field all day long I can catch catfish from dusk till dawn Make our own whiskey and our own smoke too Ain't too many things these old boys can't do We grow good old tomatoes and homemade wine And country boy can survive Country folks can survive Because you can't starve us out And you can't make us run Those when them old boys raised on shotguns We say grace and we say ma'am If you ain't into that We don't give a damn We came from the West Virginia coal mines and the Rocky Mountains and the western skies And we can skin a buck, we can run a trot line And a country boy can survive Country folks can survive I had a good friend in New York City he never called me by my name, just Hillbilly. My grandpa taught me how to live off the land, and his taught him to be a businessman. He used to send me pictures of the Broadway nights, and I'd send him some homemade wine. But he was killed by a man with a switchblade knife For forty-three dollars my friend lost his life I'd love to spit some beach nut in that dude's eyes And shoot him with my old forty-five Cause a country boy can survive Country folks can